Good morning. China has now taken over the remote sensing industry. It's an entire field of science and technology and research and application. And most of us probably didn't even know it has a name. But it is a crucial industry. And yet another that China left ahead of everyone else before we realized that they were in the race at all. This is from NASA. Remote sensing is the acquisition of information from a distance. NASA has instruments on satellites and on spacecraft and on planes that detect and record energy emissions. The NASA website's pretty cool and explains how a lot of this science works. Remote sensing is heavily used by the U.S. Geological Survey. Cameras on satellites and planes, sonar systems on ships, generate maps that are used to fight fires, forecast the weather, track changes in farmland, and see what's at the bottom of the ocean. It's also important in industry and for the companies who use drones as well as satellites. Benefits here are high degrees of precision, fast and real-time collection of data, even in the most remote areas, and at far lower cost compared to traditional mapping. Remote sensing, then, is critical in these capital-intensive industries. Construction, infrastructure, ag, city planning, energy. Building an airport or laying pipelines, then deciding where the oil rigs are going to go. Billions of dollars are at stake, and before they send any crews out, they first need the satellites and drones up to put all the maps together. And that was why the United States had such an advantage and for so long. The technology to do all this was expensive and built at home. The satellites and the GPS systems, the imaging industries, the hardware for it costs tens of billions of dollars. And the U.S. was the first country doing all that. AI and machine learning are going to drive the industry forward from here and the accuracy will only improve further while the costs fall. So even our own experts took it for granted that this was an industry that the U.S. dominated and would for years to come. But it's already over. It is China who has invested most heavily in the newest research. This professor at NYU noticed it 10 years ago. It was a given that the top research would come from the best U.S. schools and from NASA, but increasingly they were coming from China. Now it's a tsunami. Before 1990, China did not publish any papers in the field, and in the U.S. it was over 90 percent. By 2000, China was at 4 percent of the world's total, same as India. But by 2023, China was up to half, while the U.S. dropped to under 10 percent. So China now produces five times more research as the United States. And this shift is one of the most striking examples of the changes in global technological leadership. That's a big problem because this industry is growing fast. The market will triple in under 10 years and be worth $1.4 trillion dollars by 2030. Leadership in this field is essential for economic competitiveness, and that leadership has moved to China. For patents and remote sensing, China is now the majority, over 43,000 in a three-year period. Again, a dramatic reversal from the 1990s when the U.S. was almost all of it. And the machine learning applications are growing exponentially. And China's low-cost AI, no doubt, is driving a lot of their new research. It's also an institutional challenge for the United States. These data are from 2011 to 2020. So they're over five years old. But by then, Chinese institutions had taken the top six positions out of the top ten. NASA and the National Science Foundation were seven and eight, and Europe had the last two. On funding, 
China's Science Foundation spending was over 53% of output compared to the United States at 5%. China's remote sensing industry finds itself in a virtuous circle then. More funding leads to more researchers, leading to more research, which leads to more patents, higher levels of expertise, and breakthroughs in adjacent sciences, such as in quantum technology, and absolute ranging measurements in space. These technologies here were the reason that the United States led the field. The U.S. had the satellites, we built the GPS systems, had the people in places like NASA and NYU to read the instruments and build the science around the understanding of them. But China also has a space program. And we already know they make pretty good drones. And when China caught up on the hardware, they did so much faster and at far lower price points than anyone expected. In 2022 and 2023, 70% of the satellites China put into the sky were for remote sensing. The percentage dropped slightly last year because of a boom in launches for satellites of other types and an industry shift to smaller satellites for the next generation remote sensing constellations. These are the fishing raft piers in Hainan. Be good. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Jesus said, 